whole culture. Look at the things around you. From the time we open our eyes, everything that we do throughout the day, we deal with the products of technology. Technology that has opened doors of opportunity to see what man is capable of by shaping different aspects in the society, including culture. Is culture and technology related? What contributions did technology give to our society? And most importantly, what is techno culture? Is there even such a thing? Now all these questions will be enlightened in this video. But before we head on to that, let's go back to the history of human development. The history of human development has a timeline like this. Let's start off with the ancient people who relied on stone tools to hunt. Then of course, we have the discovery of fire used in cooking and for light. Next are our ancestors surviving through the Great Ice Age era. Fast forward and present times, our age today uses advanced technology prominently, and the explorations inside and outside of our planet has been given emphasis for the further understanding of what is within and beyond us. But the question here is, how did we encounter such breakthroughs? Well, the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is that we relied solely on the pure science that we discovered. That is, the basis of applied science of today pushed us to move forward to develop. As science breeds technology, it changed the way we live, from relying on our strength for survival to relying on our knowledge to construct, innovate, and develop things that would make our lives a bit easier than before. This transition changed the way the whole sector of our society works, that created a new culture that illustrates the relationship between these sectors in our world and its connection with technology, in which the whole idea is called the techno culture. Deborah Benetta Shaw in her book Technoculture, The Key Concepts Define Technoculture as the Relationship Between Technology and Culture, and the Expression of that Relationship in Patterns of Social Life, Economic Structures, Politics, Art, Literature, and Popular Culture. In the same book, she traced and explored the interrelationship of technology with social theory, science, art, nature, the body, and modes of communication. This book explained that our transition to technoculture changed our perspectives on work and social relations up until the very fundamental assumptions of how and what it means to be a human. How did technoculture influence social identity? Social identity determines who the person is based on his or her group membership. It is being developed through interaction and through a community where individuals could perceive the same task, the same goals, and the same norms. It is also how a person interacts with others. Social identity could be shaped by cultures, and one of those cultures is the technoculture. Through the vast explosion of a vast wide development of technology, our social identity changes little by little, even without us knowing. Technology has become embedded in our everyday lives and became part of how we engage, how we express ourselves. Using technology is a good, in a way that we could express ourselves even more. We could engage to others with confidence we could do tasks and assignments more broader, and we could relate to others. An example for this is using mobile phone. It is our norm in this generation to use mobile phone in our daily lives. An alarm that wakes us up in the morning down to an mp3 player that could help us to sleep at night. It became part of our daily lives. It seems like we can't live without it. 
but there is a downfall of this. It undermines who we are and where we belong. It is shifting our social identity. It is dictating who we are in a way that we settle ourselves to settle on what other people will say and will think rather than focusing on who really we are. The goal of the many now in their use of this is to carry acceptance, status, self-esteem, and popularity. Many seek uniqueness for them to stand out in the cyber world. They totally sacrifice their true self just to conform to the acceptable identity that technoculture dictates. Along with technoculture, technoscience arrives. This key concept changes how people behave in almost all of the industries alive today. This power and knowledge provides the availability of information regarding science and its application, usage, caution, side effects, advantages, disadvantages, etc. One great example is how consumers' behavior in the consumer industry change due to this concept, which in the long run changed the consumer culture. One particular example that might be prominent today is the behavior of the consumers of the skincare industry. As there are more available information regarding how an ingredient is formulated in a skincare product, paired with different platforms that most of the specialists in the industry, such as dermatologists, estheticians, and skincare specialists, even chemists, use to spread more reliable information to the public, such as YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, creates a scenario where the consumer has a better understanding of the product itself. Alongside with these platforms, there are also applications and websites available on the internet that analyzes these ingredients in a skincare and cosmetics products, and also provides studies alongside it to prove its claims which helps the consumer create a better buying decision. As these are readily available on the internet today, and most of the people have the ability to connect to the internet, consumers can now examine and determine how a particular product would benefit their skin, and what are the best products that would work for them. The downside with this is the scenario called information overload, that is connected to the misuse or misapplication of the information. As we are bombarded with a lot of information, we tend to forget the main reason why we are getting this information in the first place. In the case of the example, creating a better buying decision. As we have known how these ingredients work to our skin, we tend to forget or ignore how the actual formulation works to our skin. When we see something in the ingredients list, for example, alcohol, we will automatically say, I'm not gonna buy that, that will ruin my skin. But we tend to ignore the fact that some ingredients are actually needed in the formulation, and that there are different types of alcohol that manufacturers formulate that is actually healthy for the skin. This information overload and anxiety on certain ingredients came also from a factor of trend prominent in the skincare industry today. To avoid this, we can actually contact the manufacturers itself on their websites, as they help clear out why they formulated their product with these ingredients. We can also look up for studies available on the internet to see if this kind of formulation is not that bad. That always depends on what are your skin types and what are the concerns that you want to target. We can also ask for reviews as there are a lot of skincare communities available for you to join. It sounds like a lot of work, but if one really wants to grasp all the benefits that you can get from a product, considering the price we pay for these products, then it would be all worth it. If all of the consumers know the disadvantages and advantages of the information available in front of them, and that they also know how to turn these disadvantages in their favor, then we can create an industry where its consumers have a healthy and more efficient and effective buying behavior.
The Actor Network Theory by Bruno Latour and The Harvey's Monsters by Donna Haraway gave an explanation on how technology can disrupt society, which creates emancipatory potential within the technoculture itself. An example is how the creation of media, such as Twitter or Facebook, influences people in how they respond even though they are already offline, and that a disruption of the interaction between human and non-human actants, in this case the media and their small networks, could have consequences. Applying the actor network theory as framework to analyze how we scribe our practices into these technologies, the media isn't just an entity that just sits there. The way we use media, how we look and listen to stories or tell them ourselves, and how we listen to the object itself instead of the actual speaker in place, becomes a routine on how we use it and gives it a kind of symbolism which develops into a practice embedded in our culture. We could also figure out how the regular interaction between humans from a particular society and an inanimate entity or the media influences their intentions to use the object, such as people taking photos or videos to reveal offenders through the media or to damage one's reputation through offensive tweets as means of cyberbullying. It could also well explain their approach to specific technologies, such as individuals who choose to use Facebook in their daily lives, with how they control and monitor this could constitute a change in their behavior over time, which will, in essence, change the application towards Facebook and thus modify the media. Furthermore, the actor network theory would see the media as a set of smaller networks, cooperating to function as a common body. Twitter, for example, is actually made of several parts, the software, the internet, the database or control center, and many more, all of which are hidden from the users. And, since everything about our natural world is social, scenarios arise where certain entities control the other small networks, conceptualizing power. In this case, it is not the number of allies performed through media, but rather making others perform for our gain through media. However, there are cases where power in the small networks of media is grossly abused and mismanaged. Authorities fearing and criticizing social media when there is an unpredictable crowd is one case. People will use media to meet in certain locations to gain social solidarity, as well as communicate and organize their efforts, such as when there is a rally for a wrongful murder due to, say, bigotry. However, if authorities become aware of the potential demonstration, they can cut off the internet or communication devices in the area in order to regulate or secure the occurrence from aggression. This might infringe on their right to free speech, causing them to get even more enraged, which could escalate to violence. Whether protesters or bystanders may be unable to call for help by calling for an ambulance for those who may be injured. Hence, it's important to speak out when an equal dynamics emerge in a small networks of media as the implication affects the whole and we cannot isolate society from them. Social media's immense presence straight away affects the life of everyone. In every aspect, it has contributed a lot to how humans think, view, and do things. They base their understanding and decisions on the standards put up by social media. People imitate what's trending, made be on fashion, gadgets, language, and even opinions. The stigma brought by social media that one's voice matters and should always be heard fuels this phenomenon. The need to be part of what is happening and to be in the moment cements how social media have taken over humans. A paragon of this is the cancel culture, a modern form of ostracism that obtrudes someone out of a group due to unfavorable causes. In the online setting, cancel culture mainly applies to influencers public figures, and companies that have a large following and have shown unacceptable doings against the online standard. This cancellation occurs by withdrawing support, boycotting, and massive public backlash that paralyzes, or in worst cases, end their entire career. So what causes someone to get cancelled? More often than not, opinions regarding racism, gender inequality, bullying, and political issues lead to being cancelled. In the early week of September 2020, hashtag Korea trended on Twitter 
which brought word war between Koreans and Filipinos. Rooted from a TikTok post of Bella Porch, who was seen with the rising sun flag of Japan tattooed on her left arm, Korean TikTok users reacted as it was offensive and disrespectful to their culture and history. While others took time in explaining and educating people on why the reaction, some went further and stated derogatory remarks that attacked not only Porch but Filipinos in general. This earned a backlash from Filipino citizens, which then trended to hashtag, hashtag cancel Korea and hashtag apologize Korea. Suddenly, everyone was involved, posting their opinions, showing patriotism, and even citing heroic acts that helped the other nation before. Others even came out like history majors. Clearly shown at that moment how powerful and dangerous social media could be. A simple video with no intended harm ignited the clash. It might sound human for people to stand up for the oppressed. Although it's not always the case. Getting cancelled for having misinterpreted proves how this culture is toxic. We can also relate technology and its distortion of our reality with the study of video games as the main context. Video game is a new media form that shows embodiment of one's identity inside the game. The player's interactivity with co-players and followers create an everyday techno culture. This popular culture does not only create a newfound interaction with people but also to the interaction with artificial intelligence. But how do these interactions create a new pattern in social behavior within society? We're going to answer this question by discussing an example. A specimen for this claim are the so-called streamers. A streamer is known as someone who makes a living out of live broadcasting games. They can be seen in Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook playing games like Dota 2, Mobile Legends, and Valorant. Now isn't it amazing that even without a college degree, someone can still earn money by just playing video games. In fact, streaming can make a simple guy earn 5.4 million US dollars per year. But you've got a long way ahead of you if you want to achieve that amount of money because you've got to face a monitor for at least 5 hours in one day. Moving on, being a streamer does not mean living the real world. It means that life itself is lived within the virtual world. As stated by Stein 2016, Video games serve as well. As an art form, they provide a release, a place for reflection, and a window into others' subjective reality through which we can connect. In correspondence, the life of a streamer is surrounded by science and technology yet can be transcendent to the society with a pinch of solace added. Shout outs, sending stars, and live Q&A are some social interactions between the streamer and their followers. From this, we can concur that science and technology created a new platform for upholding the society. People can now engage to social interactions even without physical presence. Moreover, video games can also bring forth a more sensual benefit. Streamers have the passion and drive to play the game which can lessen their stress and problems in the real world. So, it is beneficial both to the point of financial and emotional fulfillment if we think of it as a general perspective. On the other hand, it is significant to know reality from hyperreality. The definition of hyperreality is the inability of consciousness to distinguish reality from a simulation of reality. By being so jazzed about playing video games, streamers tend to forget that there is a beautiful world worth of experiencing. According to Kuchera 2015, you would play games to escape reality which would neglect your real world responsibilities, which then would make your problems worse and the worst case scenario, 
is that the loop would continue for the rest of your life. So a fair warning, doing your passion by playing games is fun, but living life in reality should also be acknowledged. Know the boundaries and limitations to attain a more balanced life between the physical and virtual world. Perhaps one of the greatest contributions that led to the creation of technoculture is the availability of information to almost everyone at any time. These first steps created a new culture between people without knowing their real identity, on which some economies lean on to. The global market relies on the information that analytics brings them to the buying pattern of the market, from which great innovations and technology linked deeply to science and research are centered. These innovations and the seemingly fast transforming technoculture generates laws that helps regulate these activities. From intellectual property laws such as patents of new inventions and trademarks to the civil laws such as anti-cyberbullying law are deeply connected with the rise of technoculture in our society. As technoculture continues to develop, there is a higher possibility of the existence of various social issues and disputes within the society. From the legal perspective of inventions and improvements of technologies, to the adverse effects that are often hidden behind the exquisiteness of these inventions, conflicts are inevitable. Thus, there is a need for the society to create a system, a system that would solve these drawbacks and that would provide legal protections to the society to avoid further havoc. In terms of legal rights, laws are created wherein inventors and their inventions are safeguarded from possible conflicts which may arise upon the creation of the technology. It creates a system that organizes the society for protecting technologies that are continuing to emerge from the ideas of the people. However, as new technologies are created, new and more disputes may arise resulting to an improvement and even alteration to existing laws to cope up with such change. Just like in the year 1895, when companies Consolidated Electric Light filed against Sport Light for infringement of a patent for incandescent lamp, which further showed that the existing law must be amended, and that there is a need for detailed patents and invalidate those that are too vague. These are just among the hundreds of patent cases that cause and might result to a change in the existing laws. This only depicts that laws, just like the inventions and the issues that emerge, are infinite and in this context, limitless. Pilferage and theft are not just the issues that exist in the field of technoculture. Speaking of inventions that we have and will be created in the future, these advances give rise to hyper-reality. Indeed, technology has become a vital part of the modern world and as a result, the number of devices is growing by the day. In fact, there are now more gadgets in the world than humans. Technologies help us make our lives easier and better. But, don't you think that we are becoming too reliant on them? In his book, The Trouble with Paris, Mark Sayers defined hyperreality as the media drenched world in which we live has overextended our expectations of life. He also stated that the more we are exposed to the hyperreal messages of the media, the more dissatisfied we become with our own lives. We could not imagine what the world looks like without these technologies. If this were to be taken from us, people would not last long and that is becoming one of the major issues that is linked to technoculture. Although it has been helping us for years, technology seems to pull people away from the real world, living our imagination. People are being deprived of the real beauty of reality and are being eaten by this agglomeration of screens. And one thing that is alarming is that most of us fail to realize that these things are actually happening. Hence, technology awareness is not enough for us to understand the growing digital world. It should be paired with the awareness of our limitations as users. Social issues brought by technological development 
are likewise widespread globally such as fake news, cyber propaganda, and other cyber violence. These types of problems are chronic and ubiquitous in today's society. It is not surprising to hear fake news especially of its platform used nowadays. Propaganda which manipulate information in any forms just to influence public opinion is similarly existing and has developed along with technology. With the latest technologies that we have today, it is easier to create, perpetrate, manipulate and spread lies and false information with just a click. Hence, various laws and bills are created globally to regulate such activities. In the Philippines, House Bill No. 6022 is created and the punishment of two months in prison and up to 1 million peso in fines is imposed specifically for spreading fake and alarming information. Aside from the issues on the dissemination of false information, violence and harassment now use technology is quite alarming, threatening, harassing, and humiliating someone with an intention of hurting others socially, psychologically, and physically can now take place on social media. There have been serious cases of cyberbullying globally and is now considered as a crime based on the Anti-Cyberbullying Act of 2015 of the Philippines. These are only few of the numerous issues which arise as technoculture develops. Indeed, there's always drawbacks to every development existing in our society. These can cause serious complications to the people, but with the right and effective approach, these can be controlled, minimized, and fixed. From our behavior and identity to the way we perceive the world and the things in it, Technology has been one of the factors that continuously contribute to the development happening in the society. It has been the fuel for humanity to step forward and to know what we are capable of. There exists an interconnected relationship between man and technology. If we are alive, so vast technology. Ideas from our minds flowing through our veins and brought to life by our hands. It has been influencing and redefining our culture as human beings. With all of the revolutions brought by technology to the aspects of our culture and its consequences, the only big question here is, what does this hold for us in the future?